A weary traveller, covered in dust, knocked on a farmhouse door. It was The door was opened by a farmer's wife, and she welcomed him in because he was after some lodgings for the night. Told him to go and clean up the well and come back in and rest until nightfall when the husband John would be home from the field. They sat down later and ate their meal and then John and the traveller retired to the lounge room and around the fire sitting and relaxing and having a conversation. And John spoke of the hardship and the calluses on his hands and the dry of the desert and, and how difficult it was ploughing and how the, the goats were getting thin because we hadn't had any rain for some time and how his dreams were to one day be wealthy, to save up enough money to educate his children so that they could in turn live a better life and be wealthy as well. And the traveller spoke of his travels in the world and, and how amazing that was and, and the wealthy people in the cities, but also the other side of the coin, the poorer people in the cities. And during their conversation, the traveller looked at the mantelpiece and saw there was a stone up there and, and he asked the John, he said, what's the stone on your mantelpiece, John? It looks a little bit different than most stones that you see around. And John said, oh, that's one I dug up with the plough the other, oh, some time back. And, and I must have chipped the coating off it a little bit. And the reflection of the, of the crystals inside of the sunlight caught my eye. And so I washed it up and brought it home and popped it on the mantelpiece. It's a little bit of a good luck thing. The traveller said, do you mind if I have a closer look at it? So, John very casually tossed in the stone. And the traveller did have a close look at it, and then he scrutinised it very closely for several minutes. And then he held it up and he said to John, do you have any more like this in your field? And John said, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do have some more like this. Uh, quite a number, not quite that big though. This is quite a, a, a different one. It was a little bit big. And the traveller nodded in agreement and said, yes, it is. It is an unusual one. You see, John, I'm a diamond merchant by trade. And in my travels, I've never, ever seen a diamond this big. This diamond will make you the most wealthy person uh, in, in your, for the rest of your life and for the rest of your children's life. Just this one diamond, if it cuts up as, as a one-piece diamond, it would have to be close to the biggest one in the world and be very, very expensive. But if you have more there, then you may have the makings of a diamond mine and therefore you will be wealthy and your family will be wealthy for, for many generations. The farmer couldn't believe it. He said, no, there's no way I can be walking around on all this fortune uh, while I'm ploughing a field trying to get corn to grow and try to keep the, the, uh, the goats alive. But that was the case and they formed some agreement and went about their ways and became successful. And it's a lovely metaphor that for the fact that we have the resources, although I didn't understand the metaphor earlier on uh, when I first heard the story. And I often dug in my backyard looking for the pot of gold or, or some other um, valuable trinket that just might happen to appear while I'm doing my gardening. However, over 40 years I've worked hard and eked out a bit of a living and saved up a little bit of a nest egg before I had to retire some time ago because the physical work was too much for me. And over that past period of time, since then, the, my nest egg has dwindled away. Uh, some given away, some, some incidents has happened, some investments falling over and, and also some scams that these gurus have convinced me to buy. My responsibility entirely I understand, but I still got roped in being a gullible character. They're half my age, and they're showing me how to make a million dollars overnight, and showing me spreadsheets on the, on the computer screen as if the spreadsheet's going to make me a lot of money. They give me guarantees that seem to be false promises, and too good to be true is usually too good to be true. So there's been a certain amount of pain and, and I think, you know, I've been looking for something. I don't need to be a wealthy, wealthy person. What I would like to do is go from a situation where I'm in a little bit of hardship but would like to be in a little bit of comfort. Not necessarily in a place of, of poor, being really poor and wanting to be really wealthy. 
I think I'm in that middle road area there. And so I've been looking. And throughout the scams and being scammed, I started to now investigate each thing as it comes along. And I go to Google and use it as a research tool. And over the last year or so, I've seen the occasional item in a forum, somebody saying that they've been burnt by this scam too. But uh, some time ago, they found WAU. And they found that to be very, very good, a great community and, and, a, and a great process. And, and I've seen that two or three times over a period of time and thought I'd, I must investigate this WAU. So I did research on that and, and stumbled across the Wealth Affiliate University website. I didn't have to jump through hoops. There wasn't a fancy video to show me to start with. And I just had to put a, my email and my, my, and my password in and, and I got access to a try before you buy scheme. Try before you buy. You don't have to spend any money. You can actually just go in, get some websites, and try it and see if it works for you. I thought that was brilliant. Then I discovered there's a whole community of people in there supporting each other and encouraging new people as they come in to keep going, to move forward with the lessons, to ask as many questions as you possibly can so that you can learn through the process how to build up a small business. I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. I spent a month in there for nothing, investigating it before I went anywhere, before I did anything and made any commitments. Now, I don't want you to believe everything I have to say, and I, but I don't want you to reject everything I have to say either. I'd like you, if you're at all interested in having some kind of purpose in what you're doing, creating a little business for yourself, to go in with an open mind, do your own due diligence, do your own research, play with it, look at the courses and the training, ask questions, find out. And when you do, you'll probably come to the same conclusion as I did, if that's your cup of tea. If it's not something that you want to do, then you can make that decision and say, no, I'm not interested, bail out. Don't be influenced by anyone else. Make your decision. Click on the link below and have a go. And then maybe I'll see you on the inside. And maybe at some stage we can have a chat and we can compare our acres of diamonds. Click the link below and have a go.